Hey guys, what's up? My name is Brian. Welcome back to my channel. I've been doing a lot of scripted content lately uh, here and on my Jurassic Kingdom channel. Please check it out if you're a Jurassic Park fan. And uh, I wanted to take a break from that for a second to talk about my experience at Megacon 2023. As some of you might know, I attended Megacon last year, 2022, for Sunday for a couple of hours and uh, it was disastrous. It was not a great experience for, for everybody. I took my wife, I took my three boys, uh, two of whom were two and under. It was, it was a lot to take in. I'd never been to a convention that size. I'm far too new uh, to cosplaying in general and, and going to conventions, period, to have tried uh, such a feat. It was, it was overwhelming. It was a net positive experience in the end once we were there and we were walking around and having a good time, but I broke uh, the lights in this helmet. I broke one of my blasters for my Star-Lord costume. It, it, it was not good. This year, my wife graciously granted me the, uh, the chance to go by myself um, and, and try to enjoy the con experience on my own level. So today, that's what I'm going to talk about. We're going to break it down to the times that I was there. And so we're going to start with Saturday in the morning when I wore Star-Lord. I can't stop this feeling deep inside. So I did work all of Friday. I, I worked a full day Friday, and I came home, and I, I helped my wife out with a few... Uh, nightly chores before I skedaddled and left her. For the first time in over three years, I went out on an adventure by myself for more than just a couple of hours. I stayed at the extended suite. It was okay, a full fridge. Do yourself a favor, if you're going to stay at the extended suite, just really quick check behind the dressers because I found just all of the trash behind a couple of dressers. And so, uh, and so maybe that's somewhere that you, you want to look before you finish your, you know, unpacking and stuff, because that was a wild surprise to, to find on Saturday night. I checked into a hotel that I thought was right across the street from the convention center, but I was wrong on a couple of counts. First of all, uh, I was right across from the uh, east-west concourse not the north-south. Number two, the street that I was supposed to be crossing was an actual highway. So I was crossing a bridge and it took some walking to do, which I found out very, very quickly on Saturday morning that, uh, that I had not uh, got a windfall in, in placing my uh, reservation for this hotel that I thought I did. I was, in fact, further from it than I had been the year before. Well, I did an awful lot of walking by myself in full Star-Lord, uh, minus the mask. I wore inside the concourse, but not outside of it. Uh, that would have been silly, right? So Saturday morning, I walked to the North-South concourse. That was uh, a mistake. Uh, there's not a whole lot of padding in my Star-Lord boots. Talk really briefly about the helmet that I chose to wear. I do have a new helmet. And I, I really couldn't wait to wear it. It was, it was really nicely done. The, the new one is a 3D printed, um, and it had just been painted by uh, Make It Nerdy. He did a phenomenal job. And I just, I had a feeling, so when I was packing, I packed my old one too, this one, which I have redone uh, since I messed it up. And so now it lights up really well. I even drilled a hole in the side and put one of the lights here but i i packed it just in case and that turned out to be a good move because i i may have overestimated my abilities to pad the new helmet out I have a, a notoriously small head so like it just kept falling down and so uh disappointed but uh happy that i'd brought it i i used my old helmet i wore groot on my shoulder he was probably the least reliable part of the costume. I'm so glad uh, that he was my biggest problem. Uh, the helmet worked flawlessly the entire time. The blasters never, never once came off the clips unless I pulled them off the clips. Um, it, it was really great to be in that costume and to feel confident that everything was going according to plan. 
except for Groot. This is the Groot that you can get like at the Disney parks and he's got a magnet in his butt and then there's a magnet pad. You, you just put it inside your shirt and you stick Groot on there and he sticks pretty well on a fabric shirt. When you're wearing a couple of layers and one of them is a fall leather trench coat, I'm going to do it. I did it once. I did it again. Groot had a huge problem staying on. I, I can't tell you how many people had to chase me down to hand me Groot back. So stronger magnets for next time. Other than that, Star-Lord was flawless. Got a lot of pictures with him. That was really exciting. That's one of the reasons that I do cosplay. I like people coming up to me and asking me if if they could take a picture with me. Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm going to take a picture with you. One of the things I did um, on Saturday was just walk the concourse. I know that there's a lot of people who are upset with the way that Orange County Convention Center and Fan Expo, you know, the, the, the ticketing and the parking and like how expensive it is and how crowded it is. And, and I, I totally get that. I understand that. Saturday was super chaotic. But from my perspective, someone who doesn't go to these cons very often, I, I was just blown away by the amount of people sharing the passion of being a fan. And I know that it's, it's being monetized. It's really like late stage capitalism up in there. But like, it was still for me, and a thoroughly enjoyable experience. Um, seeing all the different cosplays, seeing how much fun everyone was having and, and all the vendors. Um, it, was, it was really, truly a remarkable uh, experience for me. Um, and to be able to do it without um, having to worry about the people who I brought because I didn't bring anyone, I brought me. So if I wanted to make a silly choice, like, you know what, now I wanna go to Artist Alley, well, why? It doesn't really matter because I'm by myself and I don't have to justify why I want to go to Artist Alley right now or to Cosplay Alley or if I want to go to the Star Wars area or or whatever. So Saturday was like a day of exploration in a way and I, I attended panels and stuff, but like I really did wander too and, and try to see as much as I could. The big thing that I did um, Saturday in the morning was do a, a cosplay shoot with Star Lord, uh, I've done a couple of uh, pictures, uh, professional pictures with Star Lord, like the ones that Sadie Mantel took. Those were amazing. She does. She did just a, an amazing job. But I didn't have like a, a comprehensive set of pictures with me. Um, it was really just a couple of hero shots that I had. So I wanted to do more, and so I did reach out to a um, a photographer for Saturday for Star-Lord and his name was Brandon Dwyer and he um, and his partner, uh, they, they made me feel so at ease. They kept me in the loop about where they were so that we could meet up, so that we could do those shots. And those shots were just incredible. I, uh, the shoot itself was incredible. Just collaborating with them, getting their ideas, um, what they wanted to see, asking me what I wanted to see, like, what kind of pictures do you want to take? What kind of pose do you want to strike? Those things were super important to me um, to make me feel comfortable because I am not a particularly comfortable person in front of a camera. I know that I have a YouTube channel, two of them, but like I'm alone and I can edit things to to make me seem like I'm I'm more loquacious than I actually am. But doing it for somebody. Uh, to be in front of a camera it does make me a little nervous and they put me right at ease. Also on Saturday, um, I had the distinct pleasure of uh, passing by Rob Taylor, Hero Fides, um, a booth, and seeing the amazing artwork that he had out there. And uh, he's got metal prints, uh, but he also has uh, normal prints. And I was very, oh, very tempted to get a metal print. Um, what really stopped me is, uh, some of you might be familiar with Firefly, the show Firefly. Um, if, if you aren't, you have been asleep and you need to be awake. Uh, I know the creator is a very problematic figure now, but uh, that should not detract from the uh, body of work that he put forth. And Firefly is an absolutely exceptional show. 
It's only 13 episodes. Just watch the thing. And I cosplay uh, the main character, the lead character, Malcolm Reynolds, played by the insurmountably cool Nathan Fillion. And what caught my eye was uh, this print right here of the Serenity. Um, and it says, you can't take the sky from me, uh, which is uh, part of the theme song and, and essentially the theme of the entire show. And this print just, uh, it was it's so eye-catching. It You can see it has the Serenity logo um, down here and the Firefly, uh, the, the Serenity from a top-down profile. And it just, um, it really caught my eye. I really like the colors. Um, on this print, I was I was really taken aback. I I, I couldn't help myself. Um, I had to have this print uh, because the next time I, I see Nathan Fillion or uh, or if I get to meet any of the rest of the cast um, in the next couple of cons that I go to, oh boy, it's this that they're signing. I also couldn't help but notice this doozy. Um, again, kind of uh, an offbeat. Uh, fan thing not exactly super mainstream um, but Supernatural was an exceptionally uh, important show to me um, and I cosplay Dean right here and I saw this and uh, as I was purchasing the Firefly one and I had to tell Rob hey, I, I need that one as well um, he had an excellent deal it was two for 60 on these prints and like how how do you how do you turn that down? It, it's one thing to be a Marvel fan, a superhero fan, um, or a Star Wars fan going to one of these things. Your your uh, fanhood is is sort of mainstream now. Everyone knows who Captain America is, and everyone knows who Luke Skywalker is. More on that in a minute. But um, do you know who Dean Winchester is? You know, do you, do you know? uh what i mean when i say reavers it's very important to me that um that the shows that might not have super mainstream appeal um but do have a, a dedicated fan base that those are represented um in me as part of who i am as a cosplayer and who i am a, as a person and so you know i've got uh, posters for jurassic park and for uh, Guardians, uh, for Star Wars, but I don't have anything in my house to really represent, you know, Supernatural and Firefly, and I think those prints right there are, are going to be the ones. I really appreciate Rob Taylor, who's really nice. Um, he, uh, he was very patient with me as I was, like, making my selections. Hero Fied, um, he shows up at a lot of cons, so see if he's in your area link in the description. I w actually walked back to the extended stay suites like uh like a like a dummy and that was not a good plan. I should not have done that. But I was a lot smarter about it on the way back when I switched into Luke Skywalker. So for the afternoon, I was in my Jedi garb for Luke Skywalker. He's one of the cosplays that I don't usually wear too often, um, and he's one of the newest too. So I really did want to wear uh, Luke. The thing is, though, um, something that anyone uh, who's been to these big cons, and especially Megacon, can tell you is that wearing Star Wars anything is basically a uniform at this point. Um, I couldn't look in any one direction and not see a lightsaber or a Mandalorian or a stormtrooper. Star Wars is so big now that you kind of blend into a crowd unless you have an exceptional costume like some of the Mandalorians I did see. Amazing costumes with so much detail. They're perfect. That you can stand out with, but you know you're you're there with Jedi robes and a lightsaber. Yeah, like I just saw that guy a couple couple people back. You know, out of the three costumes that I wore, the three cosplays that I wore that weekend, Luke got the least amount of attention. However, um, I did have a couple of amazing experiences with other fans. I met you know a Kylo Ren cosplayer who was really cool. Um, check him out on his Instagram. 
But I also, uh, right after that, had one of my absolute favorite um, experiences as a cosplayer interacting with another cosplayer. Right after I left my friend Kylo, I turned a corner and I could see there was a gentleman in full Darth Vader. I mean, it, it was really a great Darth Vader cosplay walking towards me with his wonderful wife. And uh, I don't know what got into me, but I decided to try and lock eyes with this person with some level of intensity. And I kind of pointed in his general direction and he must have seen me. How in that mask? I have no clue. But he saw me, he saw my intensity, and he matched it. So I walked towards him with purpose, and I ignited my lightsaber. Um, and I saw him do the same thing. And at that moment, I knew that synergy had just happened. I raise up my blade and I go to swing and he does the same thing and we lock blades and we're just staring into each other's souls. But I mean, he had reflective plates on his eyes. So I was just staring into my own soul. It was only broken when we both started to laugh. It was such a genuine moment of, uh, of fandom that like, it really makes me, um, it makes me a little emotional, and I'll be honest with you about that. I'm 36 going on 37 right now. I have lived most of my life uh, a fan of something, um, starting way back uh, as, as a huge fan of Jurassic Park and Power Rangers and Batman. Those are my gateways. Those are my portals, Jurassic Park being the big one. But since I was seven years old, I was this fan, but I, I grew up in a fairly rural area and it wasn't accepted really like to be a nerd today it's more mainstream to love this stuff but back then you know i was kind of an outcast you know even if even if some of the people around me did like these things they kind of kept it to themselves almost wisely to do so because there just wasn't a community for it that i ever found as a child growing up in Naples, I didn't think to myself, I should go to a convention. I thought I should stay away from conventions because I don't want anyone to know just how nerdy I am. I held myself back from wanting to go to these things. I held myself back from cosplay and from conventions because I didn't want to be perceived as that kind of nerd, even though the entire time I absolutely was. I wanted to dress up. I just thought that it would just be for Halloween. I never even considered cosplay until uh, Star-Lord came around. That became, why don't I go to conventions? Why haven't I been going to conventions? And that interaction with Darth Vader, I don't know his name, but um, if you're watching this, Darth Vader, um, thank you so much for that moment because it was a reminder of why I wanted to do these things in the first place and it was to feel that community to know that there are people that like the same things just as passionately or even like more passionately than i ever could and and to know that i was safe there and that no one was going to make fun of me for wanting to swing a lightsaber around i've got bills to pay i, I work over 40 hours a week i've got three kids to raise you know i have a wife these things can be overwhelming a lot of the time and to be able to express my passions and my, and my joys, um, the ones that I've built since childhood, I mean, it's an exceptional experience to have something like that happen, to have a, another fan match you and remind you why you're so passionate about these things. Jedi Luke was also um, the focus of uh, another photo shoot. Jedi Knight Luke from Return of the Jedi has been someone that I wanted to dress up like for a long time. I engaged the services of one of the most talented, sweetest, most amazing people I've ever met. And that was Tyler Woida, uh, also known as 
in May. I don't know how to express my gratitude to this person. Um, he is someone that I met through TikTok and Instagram. He lived in Tucson. The odds of us ever really meeting were uh, fairly astronomical, but he was uh, he, his services were engaged by another content creator, uh, another cosplayer who brought him over to shoot him at Megacon. Um, and I am so grateful to that cosplayer as well for bringing Tyler um, to Orlando because I was able to meet him. Tyler was running a little behind on our scheduled photo shoot, but that actually worked in my favor because I was able to um, take some amazing photos with uh, Rin Cosplays and um, Life with Emmy. And they came out so amazing, so incredible. Um, working with them was just an experience. I'm so thankful for that opportunity. So I did get um, my own set of pictures, but I also got some pictures with them and, and I chose two from each of them and then a couple for myself of myself. And it's so cool to see the differences in photography. Not all photographers do the same thing. Every photographer has a different way of doing things. Um, when I worked with Brandon earlier in the day, um, we were taking a couple of shots so that I would be able to select which one I liked best. And with Tyler, it was a little different. Tyler didn't take multiple shots of the same pose. He would take the one shot and that shot would be incredible. I don't know how he does it. I am blown away by his genius. So I finished the evening. Um, as Luke, I was carrying around Grogu the whole time. Um, one great thing about Star-Lord, um, was that he carries a knapsack. I had a knapsack to keep all my stuff in. With Luke, um, I, I have a detachable lightsaber hilt. So what I'd been doing was, it was at my hip, uh, on the clip. I had the cloak on, um, and inside the cloak, I actually properly sewed um, some strips of fabric on the inside so that I could slot the, the lightsaber blade into it so that uh, I wasn't carrying the blade at all. And if I wanted to put it on, I could take it out and affix it to the lightsaber so that I could use it. Because I had this cloak, I just brought Star-Lord's knapsack with me. And so I was, I had Grogu, but I also had, you know, the bag so that I could keep all my stuff. Um, again, the boots for Luke don't have a whole lot of padding. So walking became a kind of a painful experience. My feet were flat at the end of the night. I mean, flat. So that about wraps up uh, Saturday. There were a lot of people there. I mean, an insane amount of people. You can see all the, the videos and pictures from other content creators about just how many people were at Megacon. And I'm, I'm sure someone is out there right now reviewing how much uh, they liked or disliked it. I'm just talking about my own experience. And my own experience was, yes, it was crowded. Yeah, but I actually enjoyed that. Crowded means that there's a lot of people doing this. A lot of people wanted to, and a lot of people shelled out a lot of money to be there. And while I do think that maybe there should be a cap on there, um, that is not a deal breaker for me. That is not something that's going to keep me from coming back um, next year, which by the way, I, I can't. It's happening my anniversary weekend, and that is the one untouchable weekend in the entirety of late winter uh, and throughout the spring. After I promised so many other cosplayers I was going to be there, I'm not going to be there. But the next time, uh, if there's no cap, there's no cap. I'm still going, um, and I'm going to have a good time because I had a good time this time, and I can't wait to do more of these events. Um, I did go to a few more panels, my favorite being um, one about diversity in cosplaying and in, in fandom in general, in movies um, and in the comic book industry and stuff. I was really nervous about Sunday. And so uh, after, after I got back, after I showered, 
I just couldn't sleep. I was too wired from the day and for what was coming on Sunday. So I did go out to a bar by myself. I should have gone to the event, the Moshi Moshi event, the after party. I probably would have had a really, really good time there, judging by all the pictures. But I decided that I needed a little bit of rest and then I didn't get it. I had a few drinks at the bar and unfortunately got dragged into other people's fun and 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 was up way later than I should have been. But um it did help me to sleep because I needed it. Because Sunday was the Green Ranger. So the Green Ranger is my newest cosplay. Um, it's probably going to be my last cosplay for a little while um, because we're putting the boys into preschool now and uh, I won't be able to shell out as much. The reason Green Ranger is a tough one for me, I think, uh, was slightly addressed in my unboxing video. I did not have a photo shoot scheduled uh, for Green Ranger. And the reason for that is, although I had made some gains towards weight loss, um, I am not anywhere near where I'd like to be for a photo shoot. Uh, with the Green Ranger. I, I really do want to look my best I, and I want to try and lose a lot more weight. I have a lot of body image issues. I think as as most people um, who grew up kind of nerdy, kind of thicker, can attest to, I was very hesitant about putting on this costume. The, in fact, only reason that I was even considering it, that it even popped into my head that, hey, where Green Ranger is because we lost Jason David Frank. I've addressed this on my Instagram in the wake of his passing, but I had intended in 2022 to visit him at Tampa Bay Comic Con and take a picture with him, shake his hand, maybe get an autograph. I wanted to meet JDF in this costume. And uh, I couldn't because uh, my youngest birthday was that very weekend. And my wife did offer me uh, the chance to go. She said, go on Saturday, the party's on Sunday, and you can come back and you can help me. And I said, no, because there's a lot of work to do. Uh, we have a lot of people coming to this birthday party. I, I can't abandon you to set this thing up by yourself. I said, I will see Jason David Frank some other time. And within a couple of months, uh, he was gone. And I lost my chance. So when I knew that I was going to MegaCon, I knew that the thing that I would do to honor him was wear this costume. No matter what shape I was in, it didn't matter. Honoring Jason's memory was more important to me. I never got to meet him. You know, he was one of my heroes. Um, and to not be able to talk to him um, and hear his voice in person, um, that, uh, that really bummed me out. This was my way of honoring him, was to wear this costume no matter what. Going into Sunday, I was really nervous. I'd met a couple of Ranger cosplayers the day before, and I was just so, I was like, dang it, I should have worn, should have worn Green Ranger today. But I still was feeling very self-conscious putting that thing on, and I made every excuse in the book that morning to just go as star lord again or to just wear some of the spare clothes that i had and 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 not do any cosplaying that day but um you know like i i forgot like the my undergarments the stuff that was supposed to keep me tight i forgot that stuff my right arm cuff velcro had come off so it wasn't tightening man i'm tired from the night before uh, i was out too late i had way too much to drink like, I shouldn't go. I'm not feeling great. You know, getting into the costume is already, like, pissing me off. Like, I was making every excuse. I focused on, hey, you brought this for a reason. You need to put it on. So I did. And I, I Ubered this time. I wasn't about to walk it again. I stood in line to get in. Even without the helmet on, people were wanting my picture. I had the helmet off for a good portion of the morning because putting it on is, oh God, a pain in the ass. The, the, the helmet looks incredible. It's really, really incredible. Putting it on 
is a nightmare. They built it to my face measurements a little too well. I got used to it after a little while walking around with it, but here's the thing. I got a lot of requests for pictures without the helmet first, and then I'd put it on after they asked. But when I was walking around with it on, holy crap, the amount of times that I was stopped, I lost count almost right away. People can't hear me very well in the helmet, but I can hear them. And even people who didn't ask me to stop for, for a picture, I could hear them in that helmet. Oh, Green Ranger. Oh, that's so cool. That was exceptional. I got a lot of requests for pictures with Star-Lord. Nothing like this. I think a lot of the other Rangers, especially the other Green Rangers, can attest to this. The love for that costume. And almost everyone who stopped me for a picture with Green Ranger brought up Jason David Frank. I just felt so emotional about that because he was the reason why I was wearing it there in the first place. For his name to be brought up by the people who were taking pictures with me, that made everything work. It was so cool knowing like most of the pictures that I took on, on Sunday as the Green Ranger, I didn't take myself. Very hard to do with the gloves on. And I knew that the vast majority of those pictures, never see again. I was never going to see those pictures. I've seen a couple, and that's really gratifying. I know that I'm not going to see all of them, or even most of them, and that's okay. I was just happy to be a memory, a reminder of Jason, to see people's faces light up um, when they see a childhood hero uh, in, in, like, kind of in the, in the flesh, or, or honored at the very least. I didn't have a photo shoot with him, but Tyler was nice enough to take a couple of pictures of me as the Green Ranger. I think my favorite moment came when uh, two other uh, cosplayers in Ranger uh, outfits came up to me while I was with Layla, a friend of mine. Layla Ali Rodriguez, please follow her on uh, Instagram. She is incredible. Follow her on everything. She was kind of like uh, a checkpoint, almost. Like I would come back around every once in a while to say hi and check up on her. Um, and tell her what I was doing, like she cared, you know, like while I was there, that's when, you know, we, one cosplayer came up to me and we got to talking. Um, and then we had another one come up and then there's the three, we had three Power Rangers, Green Ranger, Black Ranger, and the, the Gold Ranger from Zeo. And we're all standing there and we're talking about getting pictures and getting our helmets on to take pictures and someone wants to take a picture with us. Okay. So we do that picture. And then we do another picture and then someone behind them wants to do a picture and we get a picture with them. And like, there was a good, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes where the three of us were just taking pictures. That was so fun. There was a line that formed for us. It wasn't very many people, you know, like maybe five or six families deep, but like they all wanted pictures with us and it was uh it was really great it was really a wonderful experience with those two um and i'm so glad i was able to do that it's gonna be hard to notice and i and i forgot about it i didn't bring the belt with me to show you but uh my wife got me stickers for uh the power morpher from the Jiu ranger show um instead of power rangers it says kyoto sentai Jiu ranger on it and that I, instead of putting it on my power morpher, I put it on the costume, uh, on the costumes buckle because I thought eh, that's show accurate, right? You know, anytime, especially in the early days that you see the green ranger, it's footage from Kyoto Sentai Jirenge. So I figured I'm going to do that. No one noticed, but no one was looking in the direction of my crotch. So that was kind of cool, I guess. Another thing that I did on Saturday, I was walking past the booth for Armory Quest. I picked it out like it was the first thing that my eyes saw. And that was this. Because, ladies and gentlemen, oh, I still have, still have the security tag on it. I saw this and I could not walk away from it. I, I had to have it because in his first appearances, he has the Sword of Darkness. It's a foam one, but it is so durable. I'm so impressed. Again, those guys are called Armory Quest, and um, I bought this on Saturday. 
had to take you know, back to the to the apartment uh, to the hotel room with me. Um, kind of anachronistic to to watch Luke Skywalker uh, walking around with a lightsaber and the Sword of Darkness from Power Rangers. One last thing about the Green Ranger costume that um, the, the drawback to wearing a Ranger costume versus all the layers that I had as Luke and as Star Lord. Um, you can't really hide anything. You, you, you got to carry a bag or something, which looks anachronistic, or you have to find creative ways of dealing with having your stuff on your person. Now, because this was my last day, I had to check out of the hotel. That meant I could not keep my stuff in that hotel after 11 o'clock, which meant everything had to go out to my car, which meant that I also needed to keep my car keys on me the entire time. My solution for that, not my brightest, but it was like literally my only option. I put it in my boot. And Walter told me that that's what they used to do, was put their stuff in their boots, which was like, that's so cool, right? My credit cards and my driver's license, I went and I slipped up into the glove. So anytime that I had to pay for anything, I had to like slip off the glove and dunk, dump it out. And like, it's very awkward. And it, and it made me think, you know, like maybe I do need a handler. This is a point that Layla Ali brought up to me. Maybe I should have somebody with me taking pictures of me, taking video of me, the entire time and basically holding all my stuff. For instance, my wife can do that for me. My, I can bring my wife, leave the kids, bring my wife, and my wife can be my handler and we can have a good time together, but she would be like responsible for all the stuff so I don't have to carry all that stuff and I can just be the character and take pictures with people and buy stuff and see the celebrities that I want to see. That is the drawback for the Green Ranger doesn't leave a whole lot of hiding places for stuff at all. I need to make it clear to anyone who's ever been at a convention, if you have not said thank you, even randomly, to one of the cosplay medics that run around those cons with the sole purpose of fixing other people's cosplays, next time you go, say thank you. Because those people are really truly heroes because otherwise i would have been carrying that that cuff in my belt all day long i had the costume core man and his wonderful very funny granddaughter uh helping him out he fixed it in like 15 minutes it was it was cured and ready to go and i was able to wear it the rest of the day without any issues and um i cannot thank cosplay medics enough thank you Thank you, thank you. If you're a cosplay medic and you're watching this, thank you. Like I don't know why you are so amazing and and want to do this, but you are appreciated. A lot of the celebrities that were there were incredible celebrities, A-listers or at least huge nerd credit uh, celebrities, James McAvoy and Hayden Christensen and Rosario Dawson, um, Vincent D'Onofrio, Charlie Cox. There were so many amazing people there. I wish I could say that some of them were heroes of mine, but I mean, none of them really were my heroes. Um, none of them were someone that like my jaw dropped. You know, when I saw their, their name show up, I was like, oh, that's cool. That's really cool that they're there. There was one person there who um, I didn't find out was there until, um, until late on Saturday. And that was Walter Jones, the Black Ranger, Zachary Taylor, from uh, the original run, from the first and the second season, and who will be in the Once and Always um, um, mini movie. Walter Jones is the only celebrity that I took the time to go see because he was my hero. He and the original six were my heroes growing up. I had action figures of this man. I watched him. I quoted him. I tried to hip hop keto like him. He was a huge inspiration to me to be able to meet him in person, in the flesh, Anyone who's ever met a celebrity and a hero of theirs 
can be overwhelmed by it and, and knows what I'm talking about. I was standing next to, talking to, shaking hands with someone that since I was seven years old, I had seen as a hero. It was really cool. And he was so kind and patient with me too, with taking off the helmet, putting on the helmet, like fumbling with my, with my money. Like Walter is a really, uh, a genuine guy. And, uh, I'm so glad that I got a chance to meet him. I'm really bummed. Um, Karen Ashley was right next to him and she was sweet. I spoke to her very briefly. Um, but I think I was just kind of a little starstruck by Walter and I just beelined for him. So Sunday was my last day. I, I did check out. Um, I, I left fairly early around two or three o'clock. Um, and by that point I was, I was tired. I was done. I could have stayed there all day though. <laughs> I really could have, you know, if you are someone like me, like everyone who was at that con, a nerd, someone who is passionate about uh, pop culture and, um, you know, science fiction, anime, whatever it is that you're into, and you haven't been to a con, and there's no financial difficulties going to one of these things, you owe it to yourself to be among friends, to be among people who are passionate about the same things. Don't hold back, and I don't care if you're a young person or an older person like myself. Experience it for yourself. Is it going to be everyone's cup of tea? Not really. Some people might not like all of those people crowded in one place. But if you want to make friends with people from across the country or at least across your region, you really do belong. You can start small like I did, you know, small local convention. But I am so thrilled about the prospect of going to, 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 to see more. I got to meet so many people who before were just names on a screen, faces on my Insta. People like Tree Lynn and Layla Ali and Tyler and Walter E. Jones. This is somewhere that you can feel safe to be a nerd, to geek out, to see your favorite celebrities. And if you're on the fence about cosplay, do something simple, something that makes you happy and have fun. And people will react. You know, I was talking earlier about, you know, the, the smaller fandoms, the Fireflies, the Supernaturals. Anytime I saw someone with a Supernatural or a Firefly or any of the smaller fandoms that I get excited about, if I saw them, I made a point to say hi to them, to take a picture of them or with them. Because I wanted to show them that even though they're passionate about something, they might not be super mainstream and super popular, they had friends. And they had people that liked the same thing. And I was one of those people. I really hope you enjoyed um, listening to me <laughs> regale you with some of the things that happened to me at MegaCon. Please like, share, subscribe. Um, please follow some of these amazing people that I do. You can catch me on Instagram as uh, at Brian I Cosplay right here. Um, and don't forget, if you're a Jurassic Park fan watching this by chance, uh, go visit me at my other channel, Jurassic Kingdom, uh, for just some random Jurassic Park fun um, and discussions. May the power protect you, may the force be with you, and you said it yourself to the Guardians of the Galaxy, bitch. Later, nerds.